Welcome to the session of the 6.5 Summit. Uh, the title today is Qualcomm's Visionary Leap in Automotive, a Comprehensive Overview with Nicole Degal. I'm Olivia Blanchard, Research Director of the Futurum Group, and I am joined by Nicole Degal, who is Group General Manager for Automotive, Cloud Compute, and I believe Industrial IoT. Is that right? That's right, Olivia. Good to be All with right. you. Good to have you. So I have some few questions for you. We only have 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to get through them a little bit quickly. So obviously, we're talking about automotive. Um, and congratulations, by the way, on the uh, the massive design pipeline uh, that you guys have earned. I've been uh, watching your your progress very, very carefully for the last few years. And it's, it's kind of amazing what you guys have, have pulled off. Uh, so congratulations. So like I just said, a uh, $45 billion design win pipeline. Uh, which kind of strikes the point that innovative leadership uh, in times of technological disruption also applies to automotive. And so since I have you here, uh, I want to ask you, first of all, whether Qualcomm and, and your strategies for leading effectively uh, in an era of rapid technological change, but focusing specifically on fostering innovation and adapting to do new business models in the automotive sector. Because it's not just about getting better cars out to market. It's much broader than that now. So if you could provide some color and some strategy, that would be great. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a, you know, it's a decade-long strategy. This isn't something that we stumbled upon. And uh, it's a complicated market. It makes decisions at a well-defined cadence, and yet at the same time, there is just a tremendous amount of change, a tremendous amount of competition that uh, is taking place in automotive. So maybe the, you know, to start off with from the top, the key ingredients obviously are to have a technology roadmap that is uh, critical to being able to differentiate. And we are fortunate that we span so many different technologies given the portfolio of uh, products, and markets that Qualcomm is in from every type of wireless to every type of compute to every type of AI, uh, a ton of software, a ton of enablement, a very wide ecosystem of partners that we work with. And we do this at an annual cadence. So one thing that is very important in a market like this is that you have to be agile, you have to be able to operate at a global scale, you have to be able to touch so many different industries and technologies. And the car is becoming this platform that is going through a massive consumer uh, look and feel. Consumers are deciding the types of features they want. Uh, these features are coming from technologies that come from various types of industries. So when you find yourself in the middle of all of that, you have to be able to balance between how to move quickly while at the same time being able to deliver products that are designed for this market. So I think we did a number of things right. I think we invested in safety early on. We realized that the car is not a phone. The car is a car. The car requires its own unique capabilities. It needs to leverage from ecosystems that are fast moving, but it also has to be able to deal with the complexity of what a car ecosystem is. And we have been doing this now for quite some time. So what we benefit from is we have a massive footprint in the US, in China, in Japan, in Korea, now in India, Europe, obviously we've been working with for a long time. These partnerships are very deep. You know, they go back a couple of decades in some cases. We operate across the wireless ecosystem. We operate across the cockpit ecosystem massively. We have been investing heavily in the driver assistance uh, space from a silicon perspective. We are now developing our own stack we partner with a variety of stack providers. So when you're in the middle of so much change, when you have a massive portfolio of assets and you know that there is a tremendous amount of competition, being relevant is very important and being able to watch what is around the corner, what partnerships are, are emerging, what the competitive challenges are in this industry with you know China and the EV onslaught with the uh, the U.S. and European automakers uh, making sure that they can stay ahead. Uh, we find ourselves in this very unique vantage point, and you know, they, it's about it's about seeing a lot of different things and then acting pretty quickly. I think that's what allows us to <laughs> stay ahead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It feels like you're you're getting you have at a cart, but also like kind of like the full stack of of solutions, just building it pretty steadily and pretty quickly at a, at a pretty decent clip. So uh, that's been really impressive. All right. Um, on to a different topic slightly, artificial intelligence uh, for automotive. 
um, I want to know how how you think of artificial intelligence and how uh, it'll revolutionize the uh, the automotive industry. Uh, specifically, I think how it'll enhance vehicle experiences, uh, not just safety, but also the, the driver and user experiences, and also build uh, new opportunities for for revenue, for what driving means, uh, for 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 some value that can be created by the uh, the automotive industry. Um, and also, I guess, you know, see if you have any predictions or insights on what industry leaders and consumers should anticipate. I have some ideas on that, but I want to hear yours. Yeah. So, you know, I think AI is such a broad topic in the context of uh, automotive because there is, of course, the uh, driver assistance and automated driving aspect of AI. And then there is the, you know, the consumption of AI as a driver. And then finally, there is maybe the consumption of AI as an automaker. And what do you do? How do you build for a product that has a very long life cycle? Maybe to start off from the first one, you know, we have seen, I think, uh, I think the automotive industry has actually embraced AI going back 10 plus years uh, with the classical AI uh, and, you know, classical segmentation and classification and, uh, you know, labeling of uh, objects and all of that to now uh, adoption of transformer models and being able to look at a scene and process the scene and being able to actually navigate it in a very natural way. Uh, if you look at the broad spectrum of solutions that are deployed today. Uh, there is, you know, everything from the classical systems that are driver assistance based to the fully automated robot taxis. And they are obviously using a very wide variety of AI technologies. Uh, our realization is the following. There is uh, silicon available for being able to support every single dimension of uh, AI that exists out there. We are investing in all of those as are many of our competitors. So this is no longer an issue where you're silicon limited. There is a tremendous amount of data available. So you can certainly train models for every different type of uh, AI solution that is out there. So what it really comes down to is how quickly can you embrace uh, AI and automated driving? Where do you draw the line between what is safe and where you can trust the machine completely versus where you need to actually have guardrails, where you need to be able to bring in uh, experiences that the auto industry has gained over a long over a very long period of time. I think the other dimension is, what is the variability in the type of environment you're driving in? When you're driving in an environment where the infrastructure is advanced, where uh, the infrastructure is designed for the roads to be plied with, with automated driving, I think that's one scenario. Where you are in ODDs, in operational driving domains that are less uh, designed for that type of a situation, what type of complexity does that pose? So at the end of the day, it really just comes down to uh, which market embraces the technology faster. Part of it is consumer adoption. Part of it is safety regulation. Uh, but I think we are now moving in this direction where uh, you are going to be able to have more and more safety built in into cars natively. Uh, and uh, the progression towards how does your commute become more convenient? How do you not have to deal with stop and go driving? I think those things will start to happen in a much more natural fashion. Where I think there will still be concern is high speeds. When you are in a high speed environment where uh, safety and the impact of being lax on safety is much higher, how do you deal with a situation like that? I think the other areas will obviously be in highly dense environments where there are lots of pedestrians, there, is, there are lots of mixed traffic scenarios. How do you deal with those types of safety type situations? Can you be in a fully automated environment very easily? So I think that it is a complex topic because it has a lot to do with risk assessment and uh, risk is assessed from the eyes of you know, the automaker and different automakers have different types of experiences depending upon how long they've been at it, which part of the world they have originated from, what kind of footprint they have in place. Our approach is uh, multifold. From a silicon perspective, we are building silicon that allows us to touch every single form of automated driving, from basic driver assistance to the most advanced. From a stack perspective, we are being careful. We want to make sure that we are building solutions that hit the sweet spot, that are designed to be safe. We are partnered with uh, you know some of the most advanced companies when it comes to this. BMW is a key partner of ours. And we are taking those learnings, we are applying them, we are uh, adopting those practices and then we are engaging such that when we build the next generation solution, 
we are thinking about those things uh, very holistically. One big shift that we have made in the company over the last several years is to uh, take a safety mindset when it comes to automotive. You know, we are a smart uh, smartphone company at our roots, but uh, this transition over the last several years has allowed us to actually make sure that we are thinking about quality and safety as core tenets to our uh, overall strategy. And so I think it applies very heavily, especially when you talk about ADAS. Uh, if you then think about AI uh, outside of driver assistance in the car, I think the one thing that is really unique about the car environment is that it is much more dynamic than a smartphone or a PC. You are moving different parts of the world, different experiences, the journey from A to B gives you a lot of different contexts. And so the multimodality of AI, I think is uh, you know highly, highly visible, is highly at play in terms of how to take advantage of AI in a vehicle environment. So, you know, some examples, you have to be able to uh, speak to your car in a natural way because it is easier than being able to, you know, press buttons and uh, look for a touch screen. Now, with the types of models that uh, voice-to-text is enabled, I think that's going to become fairly straightforward. I think that's just going to get deployed everywhere. In some parts of the world, that is already the case. Once you go do that, the whole, con- uh, you know, the whole conversational nature of AI, how do I actually get an answer to what I'm looking for with a tremendous amount of context. The car knows where I am. It knows what time of day it is. It likely knows where I'm headed. And so there is a lot of intelligence in the prompt that is generated for the question that you're going to ask. And as AI becomes smarter, you're going to be able to get much more value out of that entire engagement. And so that is a journey that has started. And I think we are seeing the very early days of it. But but really fascinating is in terms of everything that is possible. The other thing that we see that is really interesting is because the car sees, literally sees so much about what is around it. There are cameras, there are uh, temperature sensors, there are proximity sensors. That adds a tremendous amount of input into what the model needs to be aware of when the user is interacting with it. So for example, if I'm driving in downtown, I know the environment I'm in, I know the traffic that I'm in, I know what time of day it is, I know what is open, what is closed. Those things add tremendous context to the conversation, makes it a lot more intelligent. I think the other piece which I feel automakers are taking a lot of advantage of now uh, is the ability to do onboard AI, uh, AI in the vehicle. So, for example, being able to talk to your vehicle if you are, uh, you know, if you bought a new EV and you're looking for the instruction manual, you don't have to go take it out of your booklet. You can ask a question. And uh, the manual is already in the vehicle. Uh, it is indexed. It is available to be searched through your voice command. If additional information is needed, it knows how to get that from the cloud. So this whole combination of hybrid AI, I think is going to start to get adopted very quickly in the vehicle. So I think there is so much of, there are so many use cases, it's such a rich surface area for use cases. And then a combination of what you can do onboard versus in the cloud makes this, I think, super interesting. Yeah. And thanks for, like, I was going to ask you about your partnership with BMW, specifically about ADAS. So so thanks for answering that. All right. So it looks like we only have about one minute left. So let me ask you a a quick question, see if you can, if you can uh, give us a a quick answer. Uh, It, I've I've been trying to explain to people what a software defined vehicle is. And for me, it's simple, uh, but it's not simple for everyone. So can you clarify in in a way, in a a brief way, the concept of software defined vehicles or SDVs? Uh, Are we talking buzzword? Are we talking like, what's the importance of of SDVs in automotive nowadays and why people should not be only thinking about EVs, but should also be thinking about uh, in terms of SDVs? Yeah, I think if you think about the, design of an electric vehicle, for example. You know, it's a highly simplified design because you have a battery bank, you have an electric powertrain, you have the cabin, and then you have autonomous driving. And uh, for an automaker to be able to uh, create an architecture where you can manage each of these elements independent of the other becomes very important. And so at the simplest level, a software-defined vehicle is to be able to manage the specific aspects of the vehicle that can be isolated, that can be modularized, manage those independently. So for example, I want to manage my user experience based upon who I am. 
uh, if the car is a rental vehicle, I want to be able to have a very versatile, very flexible experience. How do I separate that from the fact that this is an EV and those aspects need to be separated? Software-defined vehicles allow you to be able to have a software architecture that allow for modularization of whatever has to be managed in the user domain versus in the vehicle domain. That's probably the simplest way to go describe it. It's a new way of writing software for the car as opposed to, you know, the hundreds of ECUs that cars used to have where a variety of different people had to come together and write their software. And, you know, we are on that journey. That is something that uh, we have already started to go down. So yeah. I think you will start to see a lot of that uh, take place in vehicles going forward. I, I expect so. Well, thanks thanks for that. Uh, I'm going to have to have you on again because I have so many more questions to ask you. I'm just kind of sad that we're, we've already run out of time. Those, those 15 minutes went by really quickly. So thank you again for joining. Uh, for those of you watching us, uh, thank you for joining. Don't go anywhere. We have plenty more 6.5 content coming. Uh, so stick around and uh, enjoy the rest of our broadcast.